it's just half an hour past midnight on the 29th of November 2015. For a while now I've been trying to figure out why the dual slit experiment that brings about quantum weirdness, how it works. Because nobody knows. They say it's a field of probability and then when you look, the light particle appears in one location. Too mystical for my liking. So I kept rethinking it a bit and watching it a little bit about how Einstein corrected Newton in how gravity works by saying that uh, space is curved and things falling and stay in the well and because of the momentum of the ongoing straight line inside the well it continues and I think won't the earth eventually slow down due to friction of space-time itself it's malleable but I see certain particles not stopping due to certain objects and others that are stopped by it. So why are some things stopping and some things passing through it? You know? So in, the, in, in terms of the speed of light, which I think is about 330,000 kilometers per second, as we perceive it, in a vacuum I think that's the speed, but the speed deviates maybe, it slows down sometimes, the speed of light, I'm not sure of what happens in a prism, it splits the colours apart, what happens when it hits your retina. My guess is simply this. The speed of light is more like a million kilometers a second. But the speed limit of space-time due to its density in all the places we've ever observed, the density being similar throughout the places we've observed, limits the speed of light. But there's more. The outer boundaries of the universe this expanding sphere at an increasing speed I think that speed of its expansion is precisely well, close enough to 330,000 kilometers a second you following? the universe expanding is currently 330,000 kilometers a second but this is not the natural speed of a photon energy sphere. Not a photon, but light emergence. In this theory of mine, there is no such thing as a photon. You are emanating light outwards in a sphere from a source light, not photons. A photon implies that it can be a particle and they want it to be a particle because you can fire them straight ahead through a single slit and they'll land in a straight line on the wall until you do the dual slit experiment in which case the even single fired light beams travel through either slit. Now, as far as I can reason this experiment without having ever observed it properly, I would say a light bulb is turned on quickly or something similar, and then a barrel is focusing the light to come out in one single direction rather than emanate as a sphere, because I can't imagine how they would fire a single photon from something. That's not, that's not a good enough excuse, but I just don't understand it. Anyway, if my lack of understanding helps in this matter, that's good anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I think the speed of light is faster than 330,000 kilometers a second. I think if it travels at 
for example, a million kilometers a second that exceeds the speed of universe expansion. Now, where is the outer limit of the universe? The outer limit of the universe is where it's expanded to. And although this is somewhat difficult to visualize, <coughs> that each, that, I mean, You would think beyond the furthest galaxies, if you fired an arrow out into the abyss, it will never hit anything because it's, you know, there's nothing beyond that. No, 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 no galaxies exist further out than that. But just try to imagine that the light is able to travel outside of the universe where space-time has not arrived at yet in this emerging bubble. But when I say that, I mean, I could fire an uh, a photon two meters away and it could have still left the universe. Not the definition of the universe where things further out than, it, than galaxies are, but rather let's imagine that there are holes throughout space everywhere and matter and everything. Like there are pixels on a screen but there are gaps in between them. In all, let's say, three dimensions. And so when you emanate light outwards in a spherical growing ball as it all travels out, like ripples in a pond, but in three dimensions, like an explosion. The light exceeds the speed limit of space-time. And space-time is unable to stop it. It does not stop it. So then what happens when it penetrates outside of the universe? Let's just say the universe is black and the scaffolding, the void, outside of the universe is white, so we can visualize that. Um, let's say that that void, that scaffolding, I'm not sure if I haven't reasoned it through, but it might not need to slow anything down at all. But residue is, is there. In fact, outside the void, everything's a bloody mess, but what happens, for example, if the, if the sphere of light expands outwards into the void at a million kilometers a second, or whatever speed it goes at, we have to wait until the universe catches up to, to the point of light. In fact, Okay, it does, it does kind of matter. It does kind of matter how much resistance is in the void. And I'm not saying the void is, is, is sturdy in terms of the same density all the way across. But it, in fact, I think you could do an experiment to see how long it takes um, if, you, if you had a fast enough calculating, calculating machine at a distance, distance enough that a measuring device is sensitive enough to detect how long it takes light to just go, for example, from the moon to the Earth, you know the distance. You can then see how long after, based on, let's say, the clocks are all atomically timed or something. We can say how long it takes for that light to arrive. Although it's going to say three hundred fifty thousand kilometers a second. Isn't it? Anyway, what I'm saying is, light goes out of the universe and then the universe expands to catch up. So the sensitive wall that detects where the photon ends up in the dual slit experiment uh, here's a slit one and here's a slit two, okay? And you have the beam 
of light back here, the, the ball light source here. Okay, so that's going to emanate outwards in every direction. One day in the future we'll invent pens that work. We're going to say that's going to emanate outwards like that. And what they're saying in the dual slit experiment is going to pass through here or here because in, in the experiment, during the experiment is thought that they were made of photons. I'm saying it's probably traveling through both because it's just a ball and hitting and, and erecting it. The reason they're thinking it's a, a single beam of light, a single particle, and a photon exists is because when, it, when they perceive it on the wall, it appears, say, there. But when they do lots of firings, they're seeing a wave, a wave, uh, disruptive wave pattern on the wall. Now, my theory works to explain how this happens in that the light from this ball here travels at a million kilometers a second. The expansion of the universe happens at 330,000 kilometers a second. So, when the universe catches up to the place where, say, for example, say, let's go a million kilometers that way or whatever, when the universe arrives at that point, um, 0.1 seconds later or less, much less, because um, the universe expands much faster than that, then where the beams cross, there's a bright light and the universe actually collides with that wave point exactly where that dot is. I need to watch more of that experiment to understand if this is flawed. However, I think it seems it needs to be explored whether or not things are leaving the universe and waiting in the void outside prior to this, prior to anything being perceived in this universe. In fact, if the, if the void is full of activity, it could have been sent off even faster than like a long time ago, and things could have already been in the void. In, and if the, we're just imagining the void is, okay, we imagine the universe is spherical, and then the void is everywhere else outside that sphere. So things head out in straight lines, and then the universe just expands in what I consider to be a linear way, straight out. Then there's the torus theory, where the universe is shaped like a donut. So what we're actually crashing into with every uh, revolution, every time we go through, so just say that's the universe, and we're riding the universe, it's traveling around here, around there. And then when we get back to here, we're then seeing some of the residual things that this universe fired off back here and we didn't collide with because we're only heading in this direction around the sphere, so around the, around the donut. So we're heading back towards our past to see things that the universe has left before in its wake. And of course, it could be any scenario in which there's already something outside in the void before the universe gets there could be created by anything. Another universe, our universe, the void itself, the creators of the universe, doesn't matter. It does matter, I'm trying to investigate, but I, I can't see what that would be. But I'm just trying to give you a little, a little insight into an alternate idea, which is that certain energy and matter and radiation travels faster than space-time and thus leaves the universe. and then we collide with it afterwards.